Hello everyone! In today's video, I'm going to walk you through my current university or studying routine. In this video, I will be studying for a classical culture test, so that's a combination of Greek history and literature. The first thing I do before I start a heavy study session is plan previously. For that, I use my bullet journal slash planner and Notion. You have setups for both of these organization systems on my YouTube channel and I will link them down below in case you're interested. First of all, for a test, I go through my readings. The goal here is not to only read all of the materials provided by the teachers, but really create a critical understanding of what I'm reading. For that, I use what I call critical reading forms. These are especially important in case your studying is comprised of research articles. Research articles have different points of views and they often have argumentation and if you are studying different research articles you are going to see a comparison between the views of the authors and it's really fundamental for you to organize all of that. So I'm currently using the critical reading form provided by Grammatology and I'll provide that website down below in case you're interested in finding the original article. So, according to Grammatology, a critical reading form should have eight things. First of all, you should have the authors, the title, the date, publication date, etc. So, it's the source of the material you are going to summarize, and it's very important for you to index that correctly in case you're trying to search for different things during your studying session. Second thing is what is the work about. The third thing is what are the main findings of this work. The fourth thing in your critical reading form should be asking yourself what gap in your understanding does this work fill, so you should mention specific papers and research. Do you agree with that? Are there shortcomings to the gap? Has it filled a bigger gap than they expected? And so on. Then you should write down what is the research tradition, approach or method used. How is the work connected to the wider research field? So, the seventh point in your critical reading form should be how is the work relevant to your assignments? And finally, what are the limitations of this work? It's very important for you to create these reading forms when you are going through your readings. First of all, they help you prepare for future studying, for future final exams, and they also help you gather your information in a more concise way and also creates a bridge between different portions of information you find in different places. Of course, that creating these critical reading forms takes a lot of work since most of these readings are sometimes 50, 60, 70 pages long. So in a daily routine, I try to do one or two of these per day and that keeps me on track with all of my work, but it, but it still provides enough information for me to continue studying that topic for the day. After that, I'm going through past notes and I will be highlighting important points. It's really important to do this after you've read something a little bit more deep and a little bit more intricate. So, so you can start with a very complicated work and afterwards you can go to your past notes and revise all of your materials to try to understand how that information you've just summarized in your critical reading form can fit into the previous information that you were lectured in class. On a typical studying day, I also like to go through my textbooks. The depth of the studying I do here really depends on how close or how far I am to my next test or exam, but I try to at least keep in touch with the chapters and how far I am in the textbook currently, so I understand how much I need to study on future study sessions and how that information in my textbook complements what I've studied previously. Also, sometimes textbooks have a lot of gaps in them, sometimes information that is really relevant to your class does not appear in your assigned textbook, so it's really important to understand what is covered in your books and what you need to research afterwards. Another important thing to say here is that I do not usually study for every single class every single day. My schedule is a bit limited right now, so I try to really time batch my studying for history. I've talked about time batching before, but it basically says that if you want to maximize your productivity on a certain task, you should group those tasks together according to topic or the kind of effort you're making and assign a specific portion of time to tackle all of those tasks. In history or in any other college, university or even high school course, 
I think that time batching can be really effective for studying uh, one class per day. I actually think that if you're always in the same mindset for that specific class, you can actually understand your course better, you can research for alternative materials and really get deep into the things you're being lectured about for that specific class during the study session that you scheduled. So after I cover all of this routine for one class, I'm going through my planner again and I'm crossing out things to make sure that I've actually finished all the studying tasks for that class. A really nice tip to make sure you never miss out on anything during your study sessions is create a workflow. A workflow is basically like a permanent schedule of tasks that you organize and hierarchize according to the priority and the importance they have for your routine. The difference between a schedule and a workflow is that a schedule can be modified daily, weekly or even monthly. And the workflow is more like a routine of your work. What I personally do is create this workflow on Notion. I do this on Notion and not on paper because since it's always the same thing and it's always organized in the same way, I can just cross things during my study session and afterwards I can just then check again the boxes and they are blank for the next study session. That means that I'm not wasting paper and I'm not losing any time writing the same thing over and over again. Before I end today's video, I want to thank today's sponsor, Brilliant. Brilliant is a platform where you can find full-fledged courses on maths and sciences and hundreds of problems with step-by-step -step guides and interactive quizzes to help you actively improve your knowledge. Even when you lack the time to sit down in front of your computer for a longer period of time to delve into their courses, Brilliant now features daily problems, which are quick and allow you to learn something new every single day. Each daily problem provides you with the context and framework that you need to tackle it so that you learn the concepts by applying them. If you like the problem and want to learn more, there's always a course quiz that explores the same concept in greater detail. One of their many courses, the Astronomy course for instance, includes 35 interactive quizzes and more than 300 guided problems and explanations. If you're confused and need more guidance, there's a community of thousands of learners discussing the problems and writing solutions. Daily problems are thought-provoking challenges that will lead you from curiosity to mastery one day at a time. To finally get better at math and start doing stuff at a practical level, go to brilliant.org slash Mariana and sign up for free. If you're lucky enough to be one of the first 200 people that go to that link, you will get 20% off the annual premium subscription. I hope you've enjoyed this video and I will see you next week. Bye!